Welcome to Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Today I'm going to be tackling two things, but they're actually going to be merged into one by the end, and you'll see. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring you on board this beautiful Gladius. It's one of my favorite fighters in the game because it's kind of like this retro look with this modern feel to it. And that's exactly why I want to bring you in here. Because this is the ship that RSI, or I should say Cloud Imperium Games, decided to put the, I guess you want to put it, the prototype MFDs in. Now I, I like these, but I also have a little bit of a problem with them at the same time. So we're gonna look at them in just a few seconds. I gotta fix some controls here first. Okay, good. All right, so the MFDs themselves don't look like something a thousand years in the future. They don't even look like something that's futuristic today, for today's world. Today's world has something much different. Situational awareness is the most important thing in a fighter aircraft. And MFDs that are set up like this are MFDs that would be in something that would be a fourth or maybe a fifth generation fighter. Let's just say it this way. It would probably be something that's more or less in a F-15E or an F-18E. And like I said, I don't dislike them. I just don't think that they're futuristic enough. The MFD that you see on the Mustang is something that's more like what's on the F-22, the F-35, and that's something that I would like to see. But of course, this is a retro design. It was made for Squadron 42 and then sold to us. And Chris is trying to keep this line of old technology in a modern world. He's trying to keep that, that balance in his, you know, in his ideas. And I could understand it. But it does hurt something that's going to be coming up now, which is going to be hover mode. And hover mode, so far, is the most disappointing implementation of a system ever in the game. And they've had a lot of missteps with some systems. To me, I feel like they're trying to fix the microscopic workings of something when really we just need a macro look at those. And I'm going to have some footage in here of the F-35 and how it takes off and lands and how simple it is today, not a thousand years in the future. But here we are approaching the rest stop in CRUL-1. And it shouldn't be that much of a issue to get our ship close to our landing pad and then to land. If they're really looking for realism, if they're really looking for a system to make, they've already started making the air traffic control. So I have to bring up the communications console, I have to refresh it when I get within a certain distance, and then I have to call for permission to land. At that point, the ship should go into an automatic approach mode. That maybe I'm flying the approach, maybe I hit a button and the spacecraft flies itself on approach. When I'm nearing an airfield in real life, and I'm landing on instruments, I'm always talking to an air traffic controller. So when I line up on the runway and hit the ILS, essentially the aircraft takes over and takes me down to almost the threshold, literally just about 200 feet above the ground. And then I could just settle the aircraft down to the runway, and thus I have a landing. Well, on more modern jets, like the A380s, like the 787s, and quite a number of others, they could actually land themselves. And an auto land actually feels arcade. Because a computer could compensate for wind and for all sorts of things. For wind, for air pressure, for air density, for temperature. And a human being can't adjust the controls as quickly as a computer. So when you're on an aircraft that's doing an auto land, it can feel very smooth. When you're on an aircraft that's doing a land, you know, having a landing by a pilot, it can feel like he's trying to hit the three wire on the USS Enterprise back in 1985. And that to me <laughs> is 
the difference between the two modes that I feel like they're trying to fix for us. The question was, before hover mode was brought into being, is landing too arcade in the game? So when we're flying our spacecraft, we have to realize we're not flying the spacecraft. We're inputting flight controls or deflecting flight controls in a matter that's telling the FCS, the flight control system, that we want to go in a certain direction. The flight control system then takes over and does everything it needs to do. Like here, the flight control system took over and said it's time to hover, so it smashes me into the hangar, which is exactly not what is intended by hover mode. But that's what we have right now. Or at least, unless I'm doing something wrong, every single time I try to activate hover mode, I'm the one doing something wrong, right? I, I, I don't know. But in real life, auto landing an aircraft or even flying a fly-by-wire aircraft feels a lot smoother than when somebody is trying to fly a aircraft that doesn't have those flight control computers that are adjusting for every single minute difference in wind, speed, and all that other stuff. So I don't know if hover mode really needed to be implemented. There were things that I always had a problem with. Like, when you go into landing mode, they didn't ever reduce the controls enough. In other words, like the vertical thrusters were never, they were never, ever, ever reduced enough to let me land naturally. So a lot of times I would just hit the end key and land automatically, which I don't feel is a problem. I think that that is a feature that most of us should take advantage of, especially when trying to put a tremendously large ship through a tiny hole on a landing pad over at R Corp Area 18. So did hover mode really need to be implemented in the way that they're doing? Well, I don't know. Because I, I really don't know what CIG's true vision is about this yet. Because the implementation of that has not been perfect. It hasn't been intuitive. It hasn't been successful. So I have a little bit of footage to show you, and I'm going to talk you through it. Let's watch it. This footage is captured from a 60 Minutes show that aired about five years ago. It's an instructor talking a reporter through the safety measures in takeoff and landing that Lockheed took on the F-35, specifically the one for the Royal Navy and the one for the U.S. Marine Corps, because those have short takeoff vertical landing capabilities. The F-35s for the Air Force and Navy, they take off and land conventionally. So what we just watched was him looking at his multifunction display, which is showing him everything that's going on in the aircraft right now. He touched a button, and the aircraft took off from that small carrier deck, the USS Wasp, and got it into a flight mode that was safe for the pilot. What we're watching now is the F-35 approaching the rear of the USS Wasp in this video game or video simulation. And the instructor is talking us through how in this mode, when, he, when it goes automatically into this hover mode, he has two inputs, side to side, because he's already lined up with the back of the deck where he wants to be. So he moves his stick to the side and maneuvers the aircraft right over the landing pad that he wants to land on. If you've ever been on these LPHs, LHAs, whatever they're called today, each one of these sections is for a different aircraft, specifically um, helicopters that would land Marines on the shore should they have to go into action. As he lines up with one of these landing pads, and he is getting visual cues specifically in his helmet for this, he just pushes the flight controls forward, not the throttle, but the flight controls, and touches down in a very, very, very safe manner. The F-35 is much more amazing than people give it credit for. 
1985, I was on the USS Guadalcanal as a U.S. Navy reservist. We would go to the ship once every six months, and we would take part in whatever drills were going on at the time. In the summer of 1985, the USS Guadalcanal was stationed off of Cape Hatteras. A day out of Norfolk, we actually received a flight of three AV-8 Harrier Bs, or AV-8B Harrier Twos. Those Harriers at the time had never been on our aircraft carrier. They were coming out for sea trials. They came out and everybody on the ship, no matter where they are, heard them immediately because they are the loudest aircraft I've ever heard. I made my way up to the conning tower and then with earplugs in, because I did work around aircraft all the time, I took out my camera and started taking pictures of the AV-8 Bs landing on our ship. It was nowhere near the very smooth and elegant dance that we just watched. It was something that I think CIG is trying to give us. The wobbling and moving up and down and chasing the aircraft carrier back and forth until it was in place and then the release of throttle at the proper moment, moment to settle it down onto the ground like dropping a rock off of the second floor of your house. That's what it was kind of like. And that's not something that I think we all want inside of this game. Because we're a thousand years in the future and landing will feel arcadish. My vision is this. You're approaching... Actually, let me talk you through this. After re-entry into the atmosphere of a specific planet, you contact Approach Control. Approach Control gives you clearance to enter the landing zone. You fly towards the landing zone. You enter into an approach mode and then boxes show up on your heads up display that you need to fly through to approach the landing pad that you've been given clearance to land on. As soon as you put the approach mode on, you specifically are only going to be able to fly towards that landing pad. You can disengage the approach mode with a keystroke if you want to. In approach mode, your speed will be reduced and your ability to maneuver the spacecraft will be reduced but not impeded, okay? Or maybe it's impeded or hindered but not restricted totally. So you're making your approach and you get to your landing pad. When you arrive at your landing pad, approach mode automatically switches you into landing mode. At that point, on your heads-up display comes a holographic image that shows your ship in relation to the center spot on the landing pad. You line those up and then you just start pushing the stick forward like the F-35 does and you settle it onto the tarmac onto the landing pad, onto the runway, onto the surface of whatever you're trying to land on. This is a landing system I think makes sense. It's a landing system that actually exists today in the F-35. It's something that I want to see happen in our game. But constantly trying to reinvent things that are very difficult to implement I'm sure is what's holding our game up. So I don't know why we had to go and just implement this hover system right now. I have to do a lot more reading. I understand that they want to take that arcade feel out of some elements of the game. But like I explained before, flying an aircraft today is kind of arcadish. From glass cockpits to automatic takeoff and landing systems to the flight control systems being totally controlled by computers. Thus, flying an aircraft today is very much like playing a video game. And since we're playing a video game, like I said, is it so bad? Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you very much for watching. Please click the thumbs up button if you do like this episode. And if you choose to subscribe, please do click the notification icon to be notified of all my future videos. And with that said, you all be safe out there. 
and I'll talk to you soon.